Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day today. My name's Cody, and I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. My original intent for today's video was to be about last week's market. Unfortunately, I was sick for the weekend, so I wasn't able to be there and uh, wasn't able to film it. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better now, and uh, everything's looking uh, good, so that's fine. But uh, yeah, it was a great market, uh, one of our biggest ones yet, which is always exciting. Um, our plant sales did really good, which is always another nice thing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. Let's uh, fingers crossed that I can stay healthy through until our pet expo, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks. Now that I've got our greenhouse area all set up with, uh, well, the greenhouse is set up, the plants are out, and everything's all ready to go there. The only thing that I really have to do as far as maintenance on those things now is make sure that they stay watered, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that is a huge chore off my list. The next thing we need to get into here right away is it's time to start planting. So I have some peonies behind me here that I want to put in these two rows in our front yard. Try to make like a little bit of a hedge. I find this to be a little less accurate as you swing, but as you get practice with it, it goes really good. Um, also, if you have to remove something from your garden that you might not want to replant or replace later, this is an excellent tool to use because it helps actually chop the roots and uh, you can pry with it, wedge with it, and it's a really good tool for that as well. Oh, that's uncomfortable. How's that? That's a little weird, but okay. Now that you've got your hole dug, the next thing to do is what you're gonna put in your hole. I always like to make sure that I amend it with, um, whether it's bone meal is always a good option or some mycorrhizae um, is also a really good option. Both of those things are going to help the roots develop nice and quickly and strongly. Uh, gives them a good boost of food. And the mycorrhizae is fantastic for increasing those networks um, for nutrition and then water absorption as well. So I always like to make sure that I put a little bit of that in each hole. So here's some bone meal. Just goes into the bottom like that, give it a little mix. Then we got our micro, mycorrhizae here as well, and that just goes into the bottom there. I like to mix that up just a little bit. Now, with the peony root itself, we wanna make sure in our uh, climate anyway, which is zone three, that we plant the crown of the plant about two inches below the soil level. Uh, no more, no less. I have had success with peonies where the crown is exposed year round and with peonies that are buried, you know, six inches deep um, for just experiments that I've done in the past. They all work, they all do okay, but your absolute best luck is to go about two inches below the soil uh, surface there. So pretty easy to do if, let's see, if this is ground level here in your hole, you want to go down two inches. So we'll have to pour out a little bit here. There we go, and just pop you in there. And there we go. The last thing to do is bury it, and uh, after we do that, of course, you gotta give it a really good watering. That's another good uh, tip there. So let's get her buried up here. Once it's buried, we'll give it a good watering, but another really good pour, uh, tip too is to make sure that you mulch uh, your plants. Anytime you add something to your garden, it's a really good idea to make sure that that new plant is mulched. What that's going to do is help suppress the weeds as well as retain uh, moisture. So any rain or water that you give the plant will actually stay in the soil longer. If it's just bare soil, with the sun beating down on it and the wind whipping across it, all of that extra moisture is just going to evaporate and not be available to the plant. So if you can add a layer of mulch, now the sun is going to beat on the mulch and not the soil. So your soil is going to stay moister for longer and that's super, super important, especially with new transplants like this. There we go. So I guess that's holes 101 and uh, it's a very exciting topic for me anyway, just the importance of transplanting, making sure that your new plant has the optimal and ideal uh, conditions for when they go into their new home. Uh, you know, it's stressful for them when we bring them up and divide them. They really had to start fresh again and they're not connected into their surrounding for at least a year. And uh, that's, that's something to always keep in mind. I was just doing some weeding in the garden the other day there and uh, an old saying came back to me because last summer, um, well, I guess two summers ago now, but anyway, I planted in a bunch of bare root things and that first summer they did nothing. A lot of them actually died right back to the ground mid-summer and I thought that I'd lost them. But when I was weeding in there just uh, yesterday, I noticed that a lot of the things that I thought were dead actually came back. And it, like I say, it brought me to that saying where the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. And that's just a really important thing to keep in your mind whenever you're planting anything new in your garden 
And essentially all that means is that the first year you put them in, it's going to look like the plant is doing nothing because it's very stressful for them and they're just trying to re-establish their roots, making sure that they can bring up enough water and nutrients into their system. And then the second year they creep and uh, you're not going to notice much top growth on them, but what they're doing is they're establishing that root network in their surrounding. So it might look like they're doing nothing, but below ground they're doing everything. And the third year is when you actually start to notice your new plants start to flourish because they've had those first two years to get established. So that's why the first year is super important, but the first two years especially allow your plant the opportunity to get re-established in that new place that you've planted them. So don't be so hard on yourself if you think, you know, that first year you put something in that it's failed. Chances are it just needs some time to get established. Um, making sure that they've got enough water is super important and enough food as well. Um, fertilizer choice, I don't have any recommendations for that, whatever you're comfortable with doing. But um, a good organic compost is always a good thing to go with. A bone meal is also a really good thing to go with as well. But uh, yeah, just something to keep in mind. I have roughly 25 different varieties that I'm gonna be putting in the hedge today. Now, I normally try to be very uniform, very straight um, with my lines. Well, so my plan is just to go through everything, lay them out first, and then after I've got a good uh, hodgepodge, uh, mix match of different plants in different places, then I'm gonna go back and then plant them then. I hope it's going to go well. It's against my better judgment, but that's okay. Let's give her a go. Okay, so minor change of plans. Um, in order to keep everything uniform and straight, like I just mentioned, I decided to go through, get everything out, uh, all the peonies uh, out and out of their um, packing, I guess, uh, whether it's wood chips or peat moss or whatever. I do have 200 here. Now that's pretty fantastic because each one of these rows is 100 feet. And so they're all mixed up. That was really hard to do, but that's okay. I'm going to uh, see what we come out of this as a result. So let's get digging some holes. I decided to change it over to the pickaxe and that seemed to go a heck of a lot quicker. It is a little bit more work up front or more effort up front, but um, you just dig the hole super, super quick. So ditch the shovel right away, got the pickaxe, already have 100 holes done. I'm gonna catch my breath and do the next 100. So we're just spreading the bone meal, which is a great all around fertilizer for your plants. It really helps with the root development. Uh, it's also not hot, so it's not going to burn the plants, which is super important. If ever you're fertilizing, sometimes we'll refer to it as a, a hot fertilizer, which means if you put too much on there, it'll burn whatever you've got. So the bone meal is a great, uh, great all around good fertilizer. And the other bucket you saw me spread there is the mycorrhizae. It's just a uh, thing of it like mushroom roots or um, fungus and stuff like that. It helps the soil. Uh, health which is super important for all of your plants so anytime I make a hole in the ground I like to add those two things just to help feed the soil which ultimately feeds our plants and in order for our plants to be happy and healthy they need a soil that can sustain and support their happy healthy growth so the mycorrhizae and the bone meal are two really great amendments that you can add to uh, your soil There we go, 200 holes dug and now 200 peonies in those holes with the proper amendments. I don't know if you can tell in the camera or not, but it just started to rain and this is the first day this year where I'm able to work outside in the rain and it not be brutal. So um, yeah, I'm sure, I don't know where you're watching this from, you know, but uh, here it gets uh, pretty cold and it stays that way for quite a long time. So to be able to work out in the rain is just so refreshing. The smell is amazing, you know, it's nice and it's cool, it's overcast, it's calm. It's the absolute perfect day to be planting peonies here. And now you can see we've got four rows of roughly 50, uh, yeah, 
51, 52, <laughs> math is hard. So four rows of 50 peonies um, in this little area here. So uh, as I referred to earlier, it would take about three years for these to really come into their own. But um, like that old saying says, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 50 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. So in a few years, these are really going to pop. But um, I'm so excited to get these in the ground. I think they're just going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to get these buried and um, we'll see where we're at. So I did most of the big digging with the big pickaxe. Now I also have this little mini guy and it's going to help me open up the holes a little bit bigger. So this first root we've got to dig here is rather large and in charge and apparently it's two so some hole is missing a plant we'll have to figure that one out but this one is quite large and that hole is a little bit small so i can use this little guy to just help open up the hole a little bit um, yeah i find that these work really quite well so let me just get this guy in here There we go. So that's, I guess, technically two down, but we got the rest left to go. So afterwards, it's super important to make sure that these guys get watered in. It's going to help settle the soil in and around those roots, which is fantastic because you don't want any air pockets around the roots. And uh, yeah, the last thing I'll probably come back in a day or two and do it is but spread another layer of mulch over top of everything. Not only does it help the area look a lot nicer and fresh and tidy, but like I say, it also is going to help save a lot of water for these guys, which ultimately at the end of the day for this first year is super, super important. So I think I've said that enough times in this video, so I'm just going to get back to work. Well, I got about halfway done. So that's, I guess, what, uh, 100 peonies in the ground and the rain's starting to come down just a little bit more now. So I'm going to move the camera inside and see if this blows over right, uh, right away here. If not, I'll get right back to it. It's just a little drizzle. Uh, fortunately, I'm not made of sugar, so I'm not going to melt. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll keep working on here, but just keep the camera dry. She's going to go away. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. got all 200 of those peonies in the ground and I think it's going to look fantastic. It's going to take a little while for them to get settled, a year or two, but uh, yeah, I think it's well worth the effort now to get it done. It's just going to look fantastic. Um, I did end up, like I say, spacing them out, uh, so I'm glad I took that time ahead of the project to actually dig the holes, make sure that the spacing looked right. Uh, it's just going to overall make the project uh, shine a little bit better. I'm, I'm not good at random planting, so I think this makes it a lot easier in the long run to make it look nice and cohesive. It was a great project. It did take a lot longer than I expected it to, but I think that goes without saying as most of my projects seem to go on a little bit longer than I intend to. But I'm glad I got it all done today. Everything looks great. They even had a little bit of rain there to water them in, which is fantastic. So that's pretty much it for the peony hedge here. There's 200 just put out behind us here. That's where I'm going to leave it today, guys. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video today, and uh, yeah, I hope you had uh, some enjoyment out of it. But whatever it is that you get up to for the rest of the day, have a great day, guys. So take care, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye now. So just to give you guys an idea of that principle of first year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap, this is the second year for this fern leaf peony to be in here. When I planted this one, it was just a single eye nub really not much root and just one eye on there and this is after one season of being in the ground so I think there's probably about nine flowers on there so it does take them a long time to get established but it's well worth it in the long run you know so in another year or two these are really going to come into their true uh, beauty and that's really what we're after here so just have to be patient with our gardens and let them do their own thing.